Okay, so let's dive right in. You guys wanted us to unpack this whole Kamala Harris media blitz, and wow, did we find some interesting stuff. We're talking about her recent Fox News interview, three articles unpacking every detail, a sitting vice president on Fox News. It's like, what? Yeah, talk about a power move. Hmm. All three articles we read agreed on that definitely a calculated strategy by the Harris campaign. Right, like voluntarily stepping into the lion's den. But why? It's about reaching a different audience. Right. Not just trying to win over a few moderates, but like actually getting her message in front of those voters who mainly get their news from conservative outlets. So it's like strategic infiltration of the enemy camp. And from what I'm reading, she did not come to play. Especially on immigration, things got uh, a little heated with Brett Baer. Oh, yeah. He did not hold back. I mean... As Fox News' main political anchor, he's known for going hard, and this was no exception. He really grilled her on the Biden administration's border policies. But what I found interesting was how she responded. She didn't just, you know, parrot the usual defenses of Biden's stance. Like on decriminalizing border crossings, for example. Exactly. She actually emphasized her own position, even going as far as saying her presidency would not be a continuation of his. That's a pretty bold statement. Yeah, that definitely caught my eye, too. Talk about distancing herself from the current administration. It really plays into this whole narrative of Harris as a new generation of leadership, which, if you noticed, she brought up a few times. It's like she's trying to thread the needle, right? Yeah. Appealing to voters who are hungry for change, but without totally alienating the existing base. For sure. And then there was that really tough moment when Bear brought up the Lake and Riley case, you know, the nursing student tragically killed in Georgia. Yeah. It was a really stark reminder of how these issues, these political debates have real world consequences. Absolutely. And the suspect in that case, as we know, was an undocumented immigrant who'd been released while waiting for deportation proceedings. So naturally, Bear used that to challenge the Biden administration's stance on border security. And this is where we really see her strategy come into play. While expressing sympathy for the victim's family, She quickly pivoted to the need for comprehensive immigration reform, even going so far as to point out that congressional Republicans had blocked a bipartisan border security bill earlier this year. She did not miss a beat, trying to strike that balance, right? Acknowledging the tragedy while shifting the blame and then highlighting solutions. Right. But she also seemed to avoid giving a concrete answer on certain issues she was pretty vocal about during her 2019 presidential run. Like health care for undocumented immigrants. Yeah, instead she just said she'd follow the law. It felt very calculated. Definitely left some people wondering if she's trying to distance herself from certain stances that might not be popular with a wider audience. Mm -hmm. It's a tough line to walk. And that wasn't the only time she sort of sidestepped a direct answer. When Bear brought up that Trump campaign ad, you know the one, attacking her past stance on gender-affirming care for transgender inmates, I was like, here we go. Yeah, that ad, which was based on a 2019 interview where she supported providing that care in prisons, definitely had the potential to be damaging. Totally. But she countered by saying those surgeries were available on a medical necessity basis, even during the Trump administration. And she even cited a New York Times report to back it up. She came prepared, that's for sure. Having those facts at her fingertips definitely gave her the upper hand. Totally. So it wasn't just about deflecting attacks, but really trying to control the narrative around her image, going beyond just policy. And that's what these articles highlighted so well. This Fox News appearance, it's just one piece of a much larger strategy for the Harris campaign. It's about reaching different demographics across the board, not just preaching to the choir. Right. It's like she's on a mission to redefine herself. We're talking appearances on Call Her Daddy, The View, even rumors of a potential spot on Joe Rogan's podcast. Definitely a bold strategy. It makes you wonder, is she spreading herself too thin? Or is this a really savvy way to control the narrative and reach voters who might never have given her a chance otherwise? It's a gamble, especially considering how Fox News and other conservative outlets have portrayed her in the past. But speaking of gambles, can we talk about the elephant? Or should I say, the Trump in the room? Right. Because, of course, this wasn't just about Harris. It was also about how her opponent might react. And, well, Trump, in classic Trump fashion, did not disappoint. Oh, he couldn't resist, could he? Took to his uh, platform of choice called Brett Baer, very fair, but then in the same breath called her incompetent and even demanded a cognitive test. Predictable, maybe, but still telling. I mean, he clearly sees her as enough of a threat to warrant his personal attention and, of course, his signature brand of attacks. Absolutely. And let's not forget his little self-congratulatory moment. 
claiming the unanimous endorsement of the U.S. Border Patrol. Which, for our listeners who might not know, is a claim that's, let's just say, very difficult to verify. Exactly. But again, it plays into his strategy, right? Appealing to his base, reinforcing their beliefs. This whole thing became less about Harris and more about Trump solidifying his own image among his supporters. You got it. It's like he's trying to position himself as the only one who really gets it, the expert on everything, even endorsements. But let's get back to Harris for a second. One thing I noticed about the interview was the setting. It wasn't just your typical TV studio, right? Yeah, yeah good catch. One of the articles mentioned that it was filmed right after one of her rallies mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania at uh, Washington Crossing Historic Park, I think it was. Wait a minute. Isn't that the site of, you know, the famous Washington Crossing, the Delaware painting from the Revolutionary War? That's some pretty heavy symbolism right there. Exactly. It taps into that whole sense of American history and patriotism, which, again, could be a smart move if she's trying to connect with those moderate and right-leaning voters. It's like she's saying, hey, I'm part of this American story, too, you know? It's a side of her we don't always get to see in the media. Totally. And I think that's the main thing behind this whole media blitz, you know? The, the articles made it pretty clear that this wasn't just about winning over a few Fox News viewers. It's way bigger than that. It's about challenging the way people see her, especially those who might not be inclined to vote for her. But going on a platform that's known for, you know, being critical of you and your administration, that takes guts. Isn't she worried about being, like, misinterpreted, taken out of context? Well, sure, it's a risk. There's always a chance of that happening. But it also gives her a chance to speak directly to an audience that might not hear her message otherwise. She gets to control the narrative. It's like they always say, the best defense is a good offense. 100%. And she wasn't just defending herself, right? She was also <laughs> laying out her vision for the future trying to appeal to a broad range of Americans. So going on Fox News wasn't just about playing defense. It was about going on offense, setting the agenda, and defining herself on her terms. Exactly. And I think it really underscores how this election is about way more than just policy. It's about connecting with voters on a deeper level, yeah. going beyond the talking points and dismantling those pre-existing narratives. Right. And it's interesting how the articles highlighted the contrast between, like, the Harris campaign and the Trump campaign. It's like they're playing two totally different games here. Yeah, totally different strategies. Harris is all about expanding their reach, engaging with all these different groups of people, controlling mm -hmm. how she's perceived. And then you have Trump, who's sticking to what he knows, right? Yeah, Attacking his opponents, focusing on his base, using that same uh, often divisive rhetoric. And it'll be interesting to see which strategy proves more effective in the long run. Right. But no matter what, one thing's for sure. This election is shaping up to be a pivotal moment in American politics. And I have to say, it's been pretty captivating to follow so far. We've covered a lot of ground here, the strategy, those key moments from the interview, the potential impact of this whole media blitz. But I'm curious, what stood out to you the most? What's the one thing our listeners should take away from all of this? It's a good question. For me, I think the biggest takeaway is the importance of media literacy, you know, mm -hmm. especially in this day and age with so much information coming at us from all sides. We have to be able to think critically, especially when it comes to the news and how it's presented to us. Yeah, it's like drinking from a fire hose sometimes, you know, yeah. especially during an election. And with platforms like Fox News, which, let's be real, have a clear point of view, it makes you wonder, what's the angle here? What are they trying to achieve with this interview? Right. There's always an agenda strategy behind the scenes. It's not just about here's the news, folks. It's about shaping the story, you know, yeah. getting people to see things a certain way. That's why it's so important to, like, not just rely on one source. It's easy to get stuck in our little bubbles, right? Like only reading stuff we already agree with. Oh, totally. We all do it. But this whole deep dive, it's been about breaking out of those bubbles. We're looking at this one event, this Fox News interview from all these different angles. Like what's the strategy here? What's the impact going to be? It's about asking those tough questions, you know, about why certain decisions are made and how they might affect voters. It reminds us that even though things feel super divided right now, it's still so important to try to see things from different perspective, to challenge our own assumptions, and be willing to have those hard conversations, even if we disagree. Because at the end of the day, we're all in this together, right? Exactly. Trying to figure out this crazy thing called democracy. And as we head into this election, it's more important than ever to be informed, to wow. think for ourselves and to, you know, participate in a way that's respectful and actually, like, moves things forward. I couldn't agree more. And honestly, that's what I hope our listeners take away from this, this whole deep dive. Be aware of what you're reading and watching. 
Seek out different viewpoints and don't just take headlines at face value. Think critically. Ask questions. It's about being an active participant, yeah. not just sitting back and letting things happen. So as we wrap up this deep dive, we want to hear from you. What do you think about all of this? Is this a smart move for Kamala Harris going on Fox News or is it too risky? Let us know.